All right, starting off video three, we're passing the girl that we passed on the last video, video two of the epic uh, biking trilogy, biking on a beautiful spring day, parts one and two, and this is part three, the conclusion of more or less, <clears throat> there's a little bit skipped at the beginning, but more or less the majority for sure of the whole trail experience you know like I say about 15 <clears throat> minutes of an hour trip and a half hour of a two hour trip you know there and back is to the end of the trail and back is a two hour trip you know I'm I'm spending it biking to the trail so like I said in the previous video video two that's something that I just don't think is particularly particularly that interesting so I just with the first video I biked around a lake and you know showed you the melting or the melted ice at the time and mid-march and <clears throat> biked onto the dock and did some stuff biking around the lake that I kayak the most and then it cuts into the you know some of the very this trail you know having just recently or having just got on it from pedaling from home so like I say if you've watched the first two parts <clears throat> which I would you know recommend I guess if you're if you've just clicked on this I mean you can do what you want but uh, <clears throat> it's a little you know kind of re repetitious obviously I mean we're just biking through a, you know wooded woods <laughs> But it's nonetheless like you know, like I said in the last video for you, biking or and or nature, you know, enthusiasts, it's <clears throat> a relatively you know enjoyable and pretty video for sure. And uh, as I'm coming closer to the end of the trail, we have a grade here, which I'm kind of like, <sighs> you know, this is where I'm starting to question the fact that I'm going all the way to the end and back not having bite for two weeks but uh, whatever I will prevail <clears throat> um, you know definitely in my burg as you can see I mean like so many places that have snow and stuff you know the springtime is very brown and stuff and I'll take it over white though I'll tell you that but uh, like I said in the last video, this was a very... See, there's me. If you can see the shadow of my head checking back like a, uh, you know, concerned or a whatever you call it, biker checking. You know, I, I do that very often where I'll check back and see what's on my tail because I like to know, you know, if someone is on my tail and I like to just know my what's going on in my surroundings basically just as a alert... <clears throat> biker you know that's why I feel like you know <clears throat> people shouldn't even have to alert me when I'm when they're passing because I should as someone being out in the world I should be you know paying attention to my surroundings like I I don't know if I've ever I've, if I've ever said it one of the reasons I actually don't really love you know you know saying on your left as I approach bikers and one of the reasons I don't say it at all when I pass walkers is when people more often than not when bikers you know are gonna pass me and they're like on your left it, it actually startles me it's like more of a startle you know for them to say it than it would be just for them to pass I don't know because if they're if they just passed you know I, I might be able to hear the gradual uh, whatever of their pedaling getting louder and it might be a nice gradual realization that I'm being passed if I haven't already noticed because I look back so often I'd probably know they're coming anyway but when uh, on, the, on, the, on the occasion where someone does speed up past me or you know up behind me and I don't know that they're there and it's like on your left it's just like startles the shit out of me so that's one of the reasons I'm not too keen on saying it when I pass people because I don't want to startle people you know and the whole, you know, trail etiquette is something I tend to forget every winter. And then it's like when you get back on the trail in the spring, it's like, oh, yeah, 
you know, in, in your in your mind's eye, in your mind during the winter when it's you're dreaming of kayaking and biking on the trail, you don't. I don't necessarily remember that there's other people involved in the equation. It's just like this, you know, in my mind. This is what it is. It's the trail and me, and there's no one else, no one else on the planet. And then when you get back out there in the spring, it's like, oh yeah, there's other people on there, and you know. In a perfect world, I'm probably expected to uh, say passing on your left to anyone, as I said in the last video, to anyone I pass, and blah, 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 you know. But that's, what, that's one thing I don't like about it, because in my opinion, if I say it to everyone, I could be potentially startling people. And if I don't say it, they could be pissed off that I'm not saying it. So you really can't win, you know. Then you got people with, you know, you can tell as you're approaching them who have, like, headphones on or earbuds in. And it's just like, I kind of feel like, you know, that those are kind of like freebies where I feel like I don't have to feel guilty as I pass for not saying anything because I can just be like, but, uh, well, uh, you had earbuds in, you know. I don't know how loud they are, especially with young people these days. At the gym, I mean, people have earbuds in, and you can hear, I mean, you can't discern what the hell they're listening to, but you can hear sound coming out of them, like, when they're, like, a yard, like, three yards away. It's like, uh, I think we got to buy some stock in, like, hearing aid companies, because, holy cow, those are going to be really busy in the decades to come, as all these people who grew up with earbuds in their ears all their life <clears throat> get older and crap. Holy Toledo. But uh, you just saw back there a couple moments ago on the right, Some uh, there's a farm over there on the right and some uh, whatever you want to call them if they're like short. I don't know if you call those things silos, but whatever. It's like farm farm storage whatever. So on, both on the right and left here there's like cows and grazing and stuff. And this 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 patch, you know, here whenever I come to it, it always reminds me of the remake uh both of the, you know, the remake and the prequel to the remake of te uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. If any of you are horror buffs, um, I always think of those two movies when I am at this particular area here. It just reminds me of a potential, you know, could potentially be a Texas <clears throat> landscape. And just the farm, you know, the farm aspect and the cattle and stuff. Um... So once again, very, you know, kind of uh, at a loss for words, uh, I just, I'll just say, <laughs> once again, a very beautiful day here recorded, this video recorded on April 1st, 2015, and uh, once again, as I said on video two, it got up to, I'm pretty sure it got up to 80, somewhere around 80, if not 80, and, um, Right now, as I'm recording commentary for part two, part one is or, or part three, part two is uploading, and it's 7:42 p.m. and the the daylight's just fading away. And uh, <clears throat> we're coming to the close of this of this video, and then uh, I had some space, like the the the, the uh, what you call it, the the biking part of it of, of the last part was only like 10 minutes, and I'm like. I had some extra space, and I'm like, well, let's just throw for all you people who watch part two, and I mentioned that I cut that part out where I wet my cap in the lake. And for all you people who are just dying to see what they missed, I thought, well, let's let's. I threw a, I threw an added bonus at the end after I get make it to the end of the trail, where you can actually see the deleted scene, if you will, and you can under, and you can see why it was deleted from part two because it's really nothing to see. But I thought. Like I say, I had some space. Let's throw it on there as a bonus feature of this particular video, and <clears throat> you know, add to the uh, the value of this video. Um, or maybe it, it detracts. It may very well detract from the value of this video. It's your call. But uh, at any rate, I, th I thought we had some space left, so I'll throw throw that video in and show you what you missed out on. But uh, <clears throat> I was just outside, pacing around in the, the, you know, beautiful, relative, very warm evening, and walking around and and just uh, feeling like I should just stay out there because I don't know when we're gonna experience an evening like this again. Or it's probably in the low 70s or high 60s now. 
And it's just like, oh man, I just feel like, you know, I shouldn't be inside doing commentary on a biking video. I should be outside just enjoying the evening, but whatever. With any good fortune, even if it's weeks and weeks down the road, we'll have more weather like that. So that's the thing about living in a really, really, really cold climate that during the winter is that when it's nice out, you have this, like, I don't know, OCD, like, guilt complex, like, you, I should be outside thing. And it's just kind of like a bummer, like, you know, I should do this. And it's kind of like, well, you know, maybe halfway into the summer, it's kind of like, well, I've been biking and swimming and kayaking for days and days. I just want to chill out. And it's like that voice will say, you spend all fucking, excuse me, all darn winter inside and it's nice out and you don't want to go on the bike. So that's kind of one of the disadvantages of, of living in this climate that's freezing half the year. But uh, this is it. This is the end of the trail and I made it and I got to go all the way back against the wind and you're going to see my face here as I check to see if it actually recorded all the way and I'm very happy as you can see to realize <laughs> to realize that it did record the whole trip and here's the the the, the bonus feature of the, the 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 deleted scene from the part 2 video where although I did <laughs> as you can see it's very exciting and that's why I thought I'd include it at the at the end here uh i i did you know delete the the ride down which is just a few ways off the trail to to here and kickstanding the the bike and stuff i just thought i'd show you the the most interesting of this deleted video which is very boring <laughs> and it's a very good idea to stand in the road there when you're but i just have i just came back from wetting the cap and uh you kind of squeeze it out uh, so it's not completely just soaked so it doesn't run down your and what didn't occur to me here because it's the spring and I kind of you know over the winter sometimes I forget my cap etiquette or not etiquette but cap whatever after I'm gonna find out right here after you wet it you can't put it on backwards because the water will run <laughs> the water will run right down you know uh, from the rear of the cap which is actually on your forehead right into your like eyes, so I'm like, okay, let's rethink this. Um, we shall put it on straight, and uh, things will be all roses. So thank you very much for watching.